Okay, good morning, everybody. Welcome to my kitchen. Today is Wednesday. It is November 21st, 22nd. Sorry, it's the 22nd. Um, I'm going to be doing a few things today, but before we get into the video, there were a few posts yesterday. One I had to delete um, from a person that was literally making fun of my looks and basically told me I was really fat on camera. And I want to address some of those issues. I had another lady that suggested that I start wearing my hair pulled back in the kitchen. Well, let's start with the first one. The first one I ended up deleting because I found that very offensive, not only to me, but to some of my other viewers that are faithful watchers of my channel. And hate on my channel will not be tolerated. As for my hair, I'm in my own kitchen. And if I was working in an industrial kitchen or a professional kitchen, then yes, I would have my hair probably pulled back into a ponytail and probably in a hair nut. Since this is my own personal kitchen that I live in, I don't feel the need to do that because I'm going to ask some of you ladies and post down below. Do you pull your hair back when you're in your own kitchen yeah, cooking? This is not a industrial cooking show like the professionals do. Even when Martha Stewart cooks, her hair is never pulled back and she does have a professional kitchen. So I'm just going to ask if you're viewing this, if it's not your type of content, there's no reason for you to make obscene comments on my channel. If you don't like it, don't watch. Move on. It's, it's, it's not easy. Anyway, I hope that addressed a couple of the, the issues that have been going on with my channel. I am going to start looking for a monitor, monitor that's going to start monitoring my channel just because I'm getting more and more comments now. And even though I only have 182 subscribers, I can still keep up with that amount. But once I start to get into the five, six, seven hundred people, if I ever get that high, I'm going to have problems. So I am going to start looking for a, um, a person that can monitor the, the channel and the content. That being said, one of the viewers had posted that she had a really, really hard time following my biscotti recipe. And I've decided I'm going to start to write the recipes down below in the description link as I do them for you guys. And I will be doing biscotti probably later on <coughs> this week and maybe next sometime next week. I'm still not feeling 100%, but I am going to attempt to get my pie dough done today. But this is not what that video is about. This is just about a chat with you all. My loyal viewers that have been with me since day one, I love each and every one of you guys. And I appreciate you guys making the comments. But I will tell you that if the negative comments keep coming, eventually I will block any comments being posted on my, my channel, and I do not want to do that. So, my friend Don, who's been watching the show, and I shouldn't say friend because he's an acquaintance because I've never met him, he had asked me about my coffee maker and if it's really easy to use. And... As you can see, I have my first cappuccino, which I'm actually going to dump because it's been sitting for a while. And that. So I'm going to push this up just a little. By the way, this thing does slide up and down. So you can make as big of a coffee cup as, as you want. But yes, I'm going to show you how easy it is. All of the control panels are on top. So... Once you hit the power button, and the power button, you know, is on when it has a steady light. All you have to do is go to the espresso. You know, maybe I do have to power it up. Okay. 
Yeah, now it's on. Okay, if I press the espresso button, or did I just shut it down? Might have been in the sleep mode. Uh, now it's not going to work for me. All right, hold on. Let me figure out what's going on with this. Oh, that's why. Sometimes if it has waste, has a lot of waste, it'll tell me to empty the waste before it'll do anything. Okay, now I'm going to show you how easy this is. Sorry, that just was waste. All you have to do is go up on top. They have the your espresso, your Americano, my cup, steam, which deals with this. You press the steam to froth. And then hot water if you're making um, like a, a tea or something. So if I just press the espresso, you're going to hear it grind the beans. I'm going to put you guys back here. I'm going to kind of hold you. And the machine does everything for you. Hopefully I'm holding this steady because it's kind of an angle in my hand. And that's, it's pulling the water and it's, it's brewing. And that's how easy it is to make an espresso shot. Now, usually I do too, so I'm going to actually, I'm going to press it again and make a second espresso shot, and that's grinding the beans. And it will actually tell you when to add beans, when to add water, if your water dispenser is getting low. When to descale de and when to actually empty your um, used used coffee grounds. When to throw that away. So that now be has become a double shot of espresso. So done to answer your question. This is so easy. The thing that takes a little bit of practice is the frother. And I'm not going to do the frother today, but my machine came with a little milk milk pitcher. And this is what the milk pitcher is. And ideally, when you froth milk, you don't want to go much more than half the way to here. You never want to fill this all the way to the top. But what you do is you turn the wand and holding the cup at about a 45 degree angle like this, you're going to press the steam button and that's going to froth your milk and you're going to swirl it around holding your finger on the the um handle and what i do is hold it into place and then just gently you want to feel the bottom of of the uh milk pitcher until it feels from what i read until it feels uncomfortable to the touch then you know that your milk is done so I'll do that eventually in another video. I'm not going to do that today just because I don't feel like making a cappuccino today. I have other things going on, but I thought I would tell you how easy it is to make an espresso. Now, keep in mind, and I'm sorry, I'm just reaching in for my cream. Keep in mind that espressos and cappuccinos are much, much different than, Amer than the American version of coffee. Most Americans, when they have coffee, are doing the great big cups. And I'm going to step over here for a second. Most people in the U.S. are used to a humongous cup. And I'm going to do a side-by-side -side comparison of what the two sizes are. So this would be my standard cup of coffee in the morning versus an espresso shot right here. And you can see the difference. There's a great big difference and the main difference is, is this is very very concentrated coffee the coffee that you get that will fill this usually makes 
your coffee maker can make 10, 12 cups at a time. And with all the water that goes into that filtration system, that's what makes our cup of normal coffee. So it's, it's personal preference um, for the bigger cups of coffee. And I wouldn't suggest doing that with an espresso because an espresso was never designed to be a great deal of coffee. So I hope that helped you, Don. I hope everybody has a great Thanksgiving. I'm going to take it easy the rest of the week. I'm not going to do videos Thursday, Friday, or Saturday this week. I'm going to take the entire rest of the week off and hopefully get over whatever bug I have. Now, if you're asking me about a foolproof pie crust, I printed one out and it looks the easiest. And I'm just going to give you guys the ingredients so you have them. It's two and a half cups of unbleached all-purpose flour. One teaspoon of table salt, two teaspoons of sugar, 12 tablespoons or one and a half sticks of cold unsalted butter cut into one quarter inch slices, half a cup of vegetable shortening cut into four pieces, and that should be cold, one quarter cup of cold vodka, and one fourth cup of cold water. What you want to do with the vodka and the water and I haven't done that quite yet with the water, is you want to put that in your refrigerator and allow it to chill for at least, at least a half an hour. Longer is a little bit better, and this can be made up to 48 hours. Or up to two days, which is basically 48 hours. And excuse me, you're going to notice that I'm sneezing a lot and I'm still under, like I said, whatever bug it that I'm trying to get over. And my husband also is, has been under the weather a little bit. So we're kind of laying low. We're not going to do a humongous Thanksgiving. I may drop back and not do all of the sides that I was going to do, but I have the, I have the cranberry already made and I just am going to do the pies today and then... I'll see how it goes tomorrow. If I don't feel well to make the turkey tomorrow, I'll make it on Friday. So it'll be made this week. So that's basically all the ingredients you need for your pie dough. I'll see you guys on the next Cooking with Joel video.